टिल नाउ वी हैड ऑल दिस इन डिस्क्रिट प्रोबेबलिस्टिक मॉडलिंग वी कैन कॉल इट डिस्क्रिट प्रोबेबलिस्टिक मॉडलिंग सो देयर द सैंपल ऑफ स्पेस वॉज ए डिस्क्रिट शेप सो इट वॉज ए डिस्क्रिट शेप सो द क्रॉस्पॉन्डिंग प्रोबेबलिस्टिक मॉडलिंग वुड बी ए डिस्क्रिट प्रोबेबलिस्टिक मॉडलिंग दैट मीन्स द सैंपल ऑफ स्पेस इज हैविंग सिक्वेंशियल स्ट्रक्चर दैट मीन्स द आउटकम ऑफ सैंपल ऑफ स्पेस वी आर राइटिंग इन टर्म ऑफ सिक्वेंस आउटकम ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट वी आर राइटिंग लाइक दिस वे सो दिस वन इज वी कॉल इट डिस्क्रिट स्टूडेंट आर मेकिंग नॉइज आस्क देम टू मेंटेन दिस साइलेंस डिस्क्रिट से एवरी वन नीड टू बी साइलेंट इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क अदरवाइज यू हैव टू बी इन साइलेंट मूव ओके मेंटेन दिस साइलेंस so uh, next uh, we are going so this we had already seen that and if you are taking this discrete structure structure under this uh, uh, the probability measure of an event uh, it is taking uh, the final form uh, or conclusion you can say that it is taking the form of uh, this one this would be the final or concluding remark that number of element in the event a or number of outcome in the event a divided by number of element in omega when uh, you are talking about finite uh, structure of the sample space that is k varies from 1 to n it is having a finite structure 1 to sorry 1 to n One, two, yeah. finite sequence. We are calling it finite sequence. Now, other also in finite sense, also I had discussed. Now, what will happens in this scenario? Like when we are talking about continuous probabilistic modeling, how we will compute a probability measure? So here also uniform and non-uniform law will come. But here the sample of space is no more a discrete set. That means Uh, we fail to write uh, the sample of space in terms of a single sequence that scenario what does it mean that means the sample of space is containing an interval or union of interval so this one is okay so it implies that uh, here uh, there might be some some kind of interval within the sample of space that means we talk about continuum point point of Uh, points which occurs in continuum manner there would be no gap kind of thing so simply it is uh, we are calling it an interval some kind of interval would be there inside the sample of space so this is meaning of continuous sample of space if that is the scenario then how we will compute probability measure and the process we will call it uh, complete uh, 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 that continuous probabilistic uh, modeling now so if you are having uh, uh, a interval then can we talk about some kind of finite uh, structure in the interval so definitely the points uh, are infinite in number even uncountable in number points are not finite but other way we can talk about finite uh, structure of this interval so what kind of finite uh, structure we can have so simply if you talk about interval so this is the interval uh, uh, in real line we can express as uh, through this way that means all the collection of all the number which falls between uh, the real number x and a this interval means uh, we say that uh, x is observing value between a and b then how we can come up with a finite structure so so this interval uh, equivalent to we can say it like this way so how we can come up with a finite structure so finite structure, a structure we are getting it here with respect to partition that means uh, we can partition the uh, given uh, interval into sub intervals there uh, except the terminal point no common points would be there no common point 
so we uh, that means we are subdividing the interval into sub interval so subdivision like uh, if you take uh, you are willing to subdivide a interval into sub uh, two sub interval that means uh, we are talking about n equal to uh, what n equal to one, uh, uh, two we are talking about two sub n is count of number of sub interval so if you are talking about two sub interval then how many terminal point would be there there would be uh, three terminal points what are those first terminal point we call it a we call it initial terminal point that we will denote it by uh, x not we will call it x not okay x not equal to a and there would be another our node nodal point you can also call it nodal point the three nodal point would be there if n equal to 2 then here this this we call it intermediate nodal point and the last nodal point uh, b we call it x2 so if you are taking here n equal to 2 that means we are uh, saying that we have partition or uh, divided the sub uh, the interval a b into two sub interval one sub interval is this uh, this one is the sub interval what is name of this sub interval you can call it it is uh, actually uh, a sub interval taking value between x naught and x1 x naught and x1 and there is another sub interval that one is taking value between x1 and x2 so this sub interval uh, this one is talking about the value of uh, real numbers between x1 and x2 so if you talk about these two sub interval then there are no common point except x1 the common terminal point of these two sub interval so uh, uh, you can uh, uh, yeah that is the case and another is that if you take union of these two sub interval so what would be that that to give back to us uh, the original interval a to b if you talk about union of x naught to x1 and x1 to x2 then it will give back to our original given uh, interval a to b you remember that x naught is here equal to a and x2 is equal to b the final terminal point or final nodal point or also you can call it node as well okay so this union of this uh, these two sub interval it is giving a so that means we say that a the in given interval a b we have partition into two sub interval a b okay so okay so this this is we say that partition of a <coughs> of an interval okay and all this scenario if you try to see uh, you can express it uh, it is uh, just involving x naught x1 x2 okay so this all this uh, concept what i discuss uh, you can summarize it it through by a uh, simple notation uh, you can call it capital p remember that this capital p is different from probability measure or you can give little bit uh, curly curly p something some another kind of notation some a stylish p you can call it a stylish p. this p is denoting partition of the given interval a to b okay and here uh, you are taking point from uh, just it is denoted by uh, nodal points x not x1 x2 okay so uh, here n equal to 2 means you have uh, at n equal to 2 means you are seeing a finiteness in the uh, interval given interval a b through partition okay n equal to 2 now if you are someone is saying that now why not we go for three partition so if you are talking about three partition that means uh, to in total there would be four nodal points if you are taking two partition uh, two sub interval then there in total there are three uh, node x not x1 x2 if you talk about uh, three uh, partitions then it will talk about uh, uh, 
four nodal point what are those x not x1 x2 and x3 okay so n equal to 3 if you talk about x n equal to 3 then the interval given interval a b it will be partition into three sub interval so take it uh, a you will again call x not okay you will denote it by x not equal to a then first intermediate nodal point would be x1 the second inter intermediate nodal point would be uh, x2 x2 and the last uh, nodal point would be x3 this b you are calling it x3 because you are talking about partition of the given given uh, interval into three sub interval so this one this this is the sub interval uh, name is you can call it x0 to x1 so here you see partitioning uh, in the finite way so finite structure you are getting finite structure of continuum set or interval if your interval is continuum set this sub interval you can call it uh, uh, x1 to x2 you will call it x1 to x2 if you go in a, a higher semester mathematics regarding partition uh, you will see little bit abstract definition but here I am trying to explain it from the idea of interval and sub interval perspective that uh, uh, you might have already seen in your high school mathematics or in plus 2 mathematics. So the third sub interval it would be uh, x2 to x3. So here again you can see the inter given interval AB is written as union of these three uh, sub intervals. So uh, all these things uh, in short you can write by a partition uh, notation so the here there are uh, actually two sub intervals so you can call it p2 here this one is p2 and all these things like uh, if you talk about here in the second case union of x0 to x1 x1 to x2 it is giving us back the interval x a b okay x1 to x2 up to don't make a noise just maintain the silence if you are having question you can ask If you are making a noise, means you are having a noisy understanding. Okay, so union of this one uh, happens to be this sub interval happens to be equal to the given uh, interval AB. Okay, so all these what I discuss uh, summary in case two, you can denote it by P3. That means we are talking about uh, partitioning of uh, the given uh, interval into uh, three sub interval so you can denote it by uh, p3 and all the summary you can denote it. this is the summary or summarized notation you can call it uh, having x not points first as a first point second point nodal point is x1 third one is x2 and fourth one is x3 so like fourth one is x3 you can call it x3 sorry you call it x3 okay so this one summarize one okay and likewise you can talk about n equal to 4 n equal to 5 and uh, I'm, I'm not talking about general n okay and I'm talking about n okay the last case you can see that so in this case uh, you are, if you, that means you are talking about partitioning of uh, uh, the given interval into n number of sub interval okay so here you call a as x naught again then the next point would be 
x1 then x2 then uh, if you talk about ith point that would be xi where i will vary from 0 to n so at this point you call it xi the generic uh, sub interval i am taking it this point would be xi minus uh, xi plus 1 xi plus 1 okay i so i have to put here dot and likewise this point call it uh, x n uh, x n and the penultimate uh, point you can call it x uh, n minus uh, 1 minus 1 so x n is what it is actually equal to b the last point uh, terminal point of the interval so it will again follow the same pattern like if you talk about union of this sub interval uh, how many sub intervals are there 1 2 3 up to n so there in total there are n sub intervals so first sub interval is x naught to x1 and the, the last sub interval would be so it will go like that union of x1 to x2 x2 to x3 and like the last sub interval would be uh, xn to xn minus 1 to xn xn minus 1 to xn okay and union of this sub interval uh, this n number of sub interval it would be equal to uh, the original given sub given interval a b so that means we have partition the interval or continuum set into n number of sub interval okay and so all these story uh, in the same way you can call you can summarize in uh, through partitioning notation uh, that uh, pn you can call it pn and just you will mention here nodal points the nodal points are here x not x1 so in total n n plus 1 number of nodal points would be there if you are willing to partition a given sub interval into n sub interval then you will get n plus 1 nodal point okay this is the partitioning approach so in any calculus and analysis book uh, you will see this kind of explanation okay so uh, here i am asking or i am explaining that i am suggesting you to see finite structure in a continuous set okay in, ten, in a continuous set i am asking to see a finite structure that is the approach because we are dealing with a uh, continuous sample space and if you talk about point wise approach there are uncountable number of points in a uh, continuous sample space and then how we can see finiteness so this finiteness is coming through that this n number of sub interval and uh, if you say that uh, what is the basis of this partitioning approach so there is a famous henne borel theorem if you are willing to uh, follow it in deeper way henne borel theorem say that every uh, compact set can be uh, 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 covered by a finite or open cover so that one is little bit comp that means you can pack uh, a Compact set means compact interval, like interval wise you can say that it is a closed interval and bounded. So it, uh, this uh, interval AB, it is closed and bounded as well, both work. So you don't have to worry much. Uh, so you can uh, pack these, uh, uh, this kind of interval into finite number of open sets or open interval kind of things. Okay, you can pack like that. So that's why it is based on that Hannibal theorem that one so we are packing it in a finite interval so element of uh, 
the interval a b uh, we are packing in finite number of sub intervals okay so it is one kind of packaging okay like uh, uh, someone is, it is uh, distributing in the finite number of packets a small packet or some uh, sub interval so that that is the finite structure what we call okay and if it is an open interval we can't do that only closed interval can be uh, <coughs> partition into finite number of sub interval uh, in that packing approach what i am saying that this, that is the meaning of finite structure then now once you are having idea of understanding what is how we get finite structure in a continuous state then we will discuss about computation of probability measure for continuous sample space okay in the perspective of continuous sample space till now anyone is having any question anyone okay so is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone how you got finite structure that i say that and why then it is based on hane barrel approach hane barrel approach we need to see partitioning approach that in the next we will see how it is coming there uh, in order to compute probability measure it is all about partitioning finite number of partition so you can go for uh, to partition into two sub interval or three sub interval or n sub interval or you can go for the refinement you can refinement means uh, you are trying to uh, decrease the width of a sub interval so as decrease as possible like that and if there here it will come uniform principle in sense that uh, you are partitioning this uh, given interval into sub interval of equal length e equal length that means uniform partition all the uh, 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 sub interval are having same length same same length same width we call it same width and further uh, proba probability of this sub interval would be uh, proportional to the length proportional to the length so all this we will see it here like here. let us again re in order to uh, explain further I, I need to erase all these okay so you, uniform probability measure is defined on the sample space with finite support you can call it uh, uh, that means uh, uh, a sample space is either finite set or compact set so finite set case in case of discrete we had already seen that now uh, if it is compact then we are talking about finite structure that means uh, uh, it is based on that uh, finite open cover uh, uh, based on Henneborn theorem again I, I don't want to cover here Henneborn theorem later if you are interested you will come to know like just we are applying that okay so consider a compact uh, uh, sample space that means a closed and bounded so bounded means length is bound uh, bounded Le length is a fixed number that means a and b are real number then what would be length of this uh, interval it would be b minus a that means that one is a finite say finite length okay and this one is an interval with finite length so that's way and means uh, in short we can say that we are talking about uh, compact uh, interval okay compact interval or closure bounded interval and here uh, under the uniform uh, probability measure what we have to do so uh, uh, we have to partition into n plus uh, one nodal points or n sub interval we call it sub interval and each uh, sub interval is having the same width we will denote it by delta delta is what x k minus x k minus 1 okay and if you, you say that the uh, total width of this uh, uh, in interval is v minus a and we have divided into n number of sub interval uh, starting from a to b n number of sub interval and each sub interval is having uh, with delta and equal with delta so a delta if you sum it n time that means uh, uh, delta plus delta plus delta for all the sub interval it would be equal to total width of the interval that is what b minus a that's where you can say that delta is actually equal to b minus a divided by n okay so it is coming through uniform pattern okay a further uniformity is like that so if you are have saying that uh, uh, the points are distributed in the interval in such a way that uh, probability of uh, 
sub interval uh, if any sub interval it is just proportional to uh, width of the uh, sub interval and later we will see that under the uh, equality of uh, uh, probability of those sub interval uh, that probability constant would be same okay so uh, we are saying that probability of uh, uh, this sub interval is proportional to delta so you can call it uh, probability of this sub interval is actually equal to ck time delta the ck is the proportional to constant k varies from 1 to n because there are n number of uh, sub intervals okay and if you talk about uh, this condition that probability of this sub interval is equal to probability of this sub interval equal to probability of this sub interval uh, through the uniform principle then this will talk about uh, c1 time delta equal to c2 time delta equal to c3 time delta equal to cn time delta so, so delta will cancel out everywhere and we will see it here c1 equal to c2 equal to ct all, all these are the same constant so we can say that each sub interval is having the same probability what is that probability the probability is c time delta now here this all these are the outcome of uniform law uh, in order to compute uh, uh, probability measure now next question is coming that what is the value of c so that value of c you will get it from normalizing property of uh, 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 probability measure so we know <coughs> <coughs> we know from uh, the definition of uh, a probability measure it is satisfying that probability of a uh, sample sp a space it is equal to what it is equal to 1 and we have already done partition of the uh, here sample of space into n number of sub interval okay so what is meaning of omega omega is actually here. omega is equally uh, here interval a b and so you can say that omega is here uh, actually can be written as a union of uh, this sub interval okay n number of sub interval and each sub interval here are mutually disjoined that means except ten, ten point they are not sharing any other points and uh, in case of continuous uh, manner uh, so this we simply say that it is a partition okay and here if, if uh, that is the situation then as the third property of probability measure uh, the probability of this union can be written as a probability of sum of the individual sub intervals okay probability of individual sub interval so you can write it like this way and we had already seen, seen that uh, probability of this one is uh, c1 time delta probability of this one is c2 time delta and c1 equal to c2 equal to c3 all are same so c, we are calling it c so what will happen so it would be c time delta plus c time delta plus c time delta how many times it is coming and n time so we will write in here uh, probability of omega is n time c type delta so from here you will come to see that the value of c is actually 1 by n time delta okay and what is delta uh, uh, delta is actually b minus uh, a divided by n if you substitute here then you will get value of c what is the value of c it is actually 1 by b minus a you got the value of c from normalizing or properties of uh, exams of probability measure okay and now substitute everything in the probability of uh, the kth sub interval uh, here it would be c time delta that means it would be delta by uh, b minus a if you simplify c is equal to 1 by b minus a this one is delta so what is delta delta is talking about width of the corresponding kth sub interval okay so under the uniform law probability of a sub interval the kth set or a set interval is what it is actually width of the sub interval divided by total width total width of, of the sample because total width uh, we are talking about uh, width of the sample space in continuum fashion not in discrete in continuum if you are having uh, sample space a continuous set that means here we will talk about width of the uh, sample space why because here points outcome occurs in a continuum manner it is not like discrete or sequential structure it is a continuous manner so we can see it here uh, also this one is very much similar to what we had seen in finite sample as, uh, as space in case of uh, discrete probabilistic modeling similar is coming here but there in uh, uh, number of element has been replaced by length of the sub interval and the corresponding parent interval okay this is the way to compute uh, probability measure in under the uniform law uh, in continuous uh, sample space when your sample space is a continuous interval kind of thing okay so i think uh, 
it is already uh, i have taken uh, uh, 30 minutes so uh, next thing i will discuss in next class